Last time on AFC Outdoors, our Brim Pros tackled the mighty Hawkesbury River and a round of angling Adam Reuter would rather forget. After missing too many, he could only manage a bag of three. After a blinder on the Gold Coast, Tim Morgan was looking to repeat his good form, but the bites didn't go his way and he too landed only three legals. Ian Miller needed a good performance to lift Savage off the bottom of the leaderboard. He was consistent all day, yes. getting a full bag and the Nitro Rod's big fish, but in the end had to settle for second. The conqueror of the Hawkesbury, though, was Chris Wright. Yes. Having won here last year, he put in a superb performance at lure angling, bagging a new AFC record. This week it's back to bass as our teams head to the fresh water of Lake Glenbourne in the Hunter Valley for what is for all teams a critical round of pro angling. You're watching the Australian Fishing Championships. I'm Steve Starling and welcome to round five of the Australian Fishing Championships, this time from Lake Glenbourne in the Hunter Valley of New South Wales. After two rounds of bass and two rounds of brim, our championship leaderboard clearly shows that all of our teams are still well and truly in contention to be crowned Australian Fishing Champions. And I'm joined now by Tim Morgan and John Schofield from Team Mercury. Tim, not exactly the result you would have preferred on the Hawkesbury, but Mercury's been able to hold on to second place. No, Steve, I was pretty disappointed. I had some really big fish on there that, you know, if I got in the boat, really could have pushed us up the leaderboard a bit, but that's fishing, and uh, John's really primed to have a couple of good bass rounds. Well, good luck, John. And Glenbourne is renowned for its monster bass, so let's have a look around this big fish arena. The third of our four bass arenas is Lake Glenbourne in the picturesque Hunter Valley of New South Wales. This region is home to some full-bodied reds and some equally solid bass. Like all our inland bass arenas, Glenbourne has been hit hard by the long-running drought and its water levels are down a little, but the fishing doesn't seem to have suffered as a result. Glenbourne continues to turn up bass of truly legendary proportions and may come from a range of habitats. Our pros are likely to target the lake's abundant drowned timber, steep rocky points, submerged weed bed edges, and even the waters adjacent to these gently sloping grassy banks and points. Fishing strategies here will include casting and jigging with hard-bodied lures, spinner baits and soft plastics, and we may even see some fly fishing action. But let's hear from the pros themselves about the options and the conditions. I always love a glassed out, I hate the wind. Winds, I, I, can, I can fish in the wind, I'll fish in any condition, but I love a glassed out so I can see the weed edge, see the timber, and, and it's just more comfortable to fish in. Everyone's got a good chance. We're all gonna, we're all gonna fish a similar sort of technique, working the edges. Um, if anyone, I think maybe John Schofield, he had a little bit of helping hand with some local knowledge, so I think he could be a big threat. I fish tournaments here at Lake Glenbourne a number of times. I've um, got to make up for the lentils round because I feel I let that slip through my fingers by losing those big fish. Even if everybody knows where there's fish and, and getting plenty of bites, if you've got a bit of local knowledge and you know where there's a few big fish and you can pull that big bite if you're good enough, and most of these anglers are, then it certainly gives you an advantage. Well, it sounds like we could be in for some great fishing. Let's find out as we cross to Matthew Campbell for the start of round five at Glenbourne. Thanks very much, Steve, and a very interesting day indeed ahead. As you can see, choppy conditions, by far the roughest conditions of the tournament so far, and in stark contrast to yesterday's pre-fish. Each round of AFC Outdoors, our pros are allowed to pre-fish the day before competition, the same amount of time, so today it will be a big factor. The Club Marine Clock counts down, there's the siren, our bass pros are underway as we recap the rules. Today will be a six hour session, our pros are looking for a bag of two, the heaviest bag of two fish will take out the maximum ten points. Harry Watson from Team Shimano got off to a great start winning round one, here he is for today's Bass Angler Profile. Uh, I suppose really seriously I started fishing tournaments when um, ABT started in, in 99 and I fished the first ever tournament and I won that tournament and then went on that year to win the grand final so um, that really kicked me off and I, and I learnt so much from that and it helped my guiding so much that I thought it, it, it tied in really well. As a fishing guide, tournament angling helps 
because I'm competing against other guys, I'm learning techniques and I suppose I'm taking other people out there fishing and, and introducing them to the same sort of thing and learning as I go. I suppose I learn a lot from people who I suppose you would say don't know what they're doing but they sometimes do things and I think, oh, I've learned something myself today if they catch a fish doing it. Yep. People can watch this series on TV and get a view that, hey, I could probably catch those fish myself and go out there and do it. Like, we show them our lures, we show them our techniques, etc., etc., and they can pick up enough of us to then hopefully get enough interest to go out there and, and do that themselves. And here is Harry Watson from Team Shimano, our championship leaders, and right from the start, he's gone searching for some quieter conditions. Yep, there's one. I might put this one in the well. That's my third cast on the bank. I'll net this fella, but I'll... He's not going to be a keeper for the day. I'll get rid of this bloke pretty quick to... Uh, I'm just going to pole him. He's a heavy little fella. Fabulous start for Team Shimano. One in the well after just 15 minutes. Now here's Carl Jockinson from Team Savage. Like Harry, looking for quieter conditions. Fishing the top end of an arm of Lake Glenbourne. And around that submerged timber. Yeah, got him. And a good yeah. start for him as well. Come out of them logs. This is very important for Team Savage. Currently sitting fourth on the championship ladder. Needing some points today. But interesting to see that both Carl Jockinson and Harry Watson, winners from rounds one and two, are off to a good start here at the Hunter Valley. It's one in the boat. <laughs> It's not a huge fish, but it will give him confidence. It's just the start Team Savage was looking for. He's a scorer, not a huge fish, but I've got one. Here's the consistent Jason Ehrlich from Team Netspace. A completely different tactic, out in the open, windy conditions. Yep, on. There and it seems to be working for him. He's just around some treetops, hoping that the windy conditions have pushed the fish towards them, looking for food. Fish number one is It'll be number one for Team Netspace. He's only skinny too. There's a bass. Just gobbled up that Ozpin spinner bait. I'm fishing 5 8 ounce, so it's a heavy head. You can see it's got a heavy head on it there. And just small blades and a natural sort of colour. But he's just a little bass. He's going in the well. Coming up from a windy day on Lake Glenbourne, the bass are biting, but they're just not big enough. It's not what we're after. Welcome back to AFC Outdoors, round five from Lake Glenbourne in the Hunter Valley. This is John Schofield from Team Mercury, one of the most experienced bass fishermen in the country. 40 minutes into the competition, on for his first. As you can see, this will even up the scoreboard if he lands what looks to be a pretty good sized fish. He knows what to do, poles it straight in. It's a good start. Won't win us a tournament, but it's nice to have one in the well. Team Mercury underway. It's a level playing field. All four teams with one in the well. Back to Carl Jockinson from Team Savage. Hasn't moved since he caught his first fish. Still fishing around those submerged trees. It's pretty tricky, but he's showing a lot of experience. He is the young gun in an elite field. Yeah, got him. Another one. <laughs> yeah, boy. There's branches and stuff there. Got him out. Yeah, there's two in the boat. <laughs> He's excited, and why wouldn't he be? He's got over five hours to upgrade his full bag of two. Let's leave Carl and head to Jason Ehrlich. I'm onto a fish there. I've cast right into the back over this snag, holding my rod tip up high, trying to keep him out of this snag. He swam straight back into it. You can see the sticks just here, and he's gone down deep on them. Still got him on. OK. I see my leader, so I know he's not just too far away. Here he comes. He's off. He's not a huge fish. Let's pop him in the net. He's a fatter fish than the first one that I caught, so that's good. Finally put my second one in. It's a bit of an exciting fight, that fish getting me down under those trees. He's only a baby, but he's nice and fat, so he'll weigh good. Jason Ehrlich taking us through beautifully his second fish. He's now upgrading. And Harry Watson from Team Shimano is looking for his second, so he can do likewise. He's moved out into some open water, a change of yep. tactic, and he's on for number two. It's a tight day here on Lake Glenbourne. Exactly where they were yesterday. He's not a big fish, though. Conditions have changed since yesterday. Harry had a lot of success here with some good-sized fish. This one seems to be a little bit smaller. He'd be happy that he's on for number two, but he knows he needs heavy fish. The windy conditions have changed things up here at Lake Glenbourne. Harry will need to change his tactics. 
Carl Jockinson won't have to, though. Already with two in the well. This is number three. And take a look at his first upgrade. That's the one that was in there. This is the one that's going in. He's a definite upgrader. Carl Jockinson is definitely handling the conditions better than some of the others. For an update, here's Steve Starling with Team Net Spaces, Jason Ehrlich. How's your morning been so far, Jason? I've missed a lot of fish this morning. I've put two in the well. Probably a bit under two kilos in there so far. I'd like to see that, you know, well over three, but you know, I think it's fishing a lot tougher than what it did on the pre-fish day. Weather's a little bit different. Maybe that's a contributing factor. Um, yeah, might just have to change my plans a little bit, I think, later on in the day. I've got some other plans that I think will catch these shut-down fish. Back to Harry Watson with some plans of his own. Nice point running down there and some trees hanging off it, so it's probably worth throwing a few lures right in underneath. Well, this is why they're the best in Australia. Both Jason and Harry realised just two hours into the competition, new tactics are needed. Things aren't working exactly how they planned in the pre-fish. And yep. look at that, already success. Oh, this is the fish I wanted. Straight under that tree, down deep. Oh, yeah. This is one I wanted. Oh, no. A bit of a change for Harry, having to work a lot harder than his first two fish. Will he get the reward that he was looking for? Out comes the net. Will it be the size he's looking for? It's not as big as I thought he was. Well, perhaps not. But maybe it could be his first upgrade for the morning. And maybe he's found the right spot, the right secret for success. It's all on off. I thought he was bigger than that. Harry Watson still looking for big bass. Carl Jockamson's finding them. Yep, got him. Yep. Stuff that weed. He might be an upgrader. Oh, he's only just hooked. Yes, got him. Stuff that weed. Nice bass. Young Carl Jockamson really giving Team Savage a great opportunity to get off the bottom of the championship ladder. Back over to John Schofield from Team Mercury. Not having the best of a morning. Two and a half hours into the competition. One in the live well. He's on for number two here. Still has plenty of time. We're going right through to midday. He needs this second fish, but importantly, like the other pros, he needs it to be of a good size. He'll need a lot more than that. Coming up on AFC Outdoors, can our pros open up these shut-down fish? Oh, I just can't do it with that win. A bit of a front come through, I'd say. They're gone. Welcome back to AFC Outdoors. Conditions very tough for our pros. Let's hear from Steve Starling with Harry Watson. How's your morning been, Harry? Uh, pretty ordinary so far, Steve, yeah. Had a real ordinary morning. Just not doing what they were doing in the pre-fish? Nah. Spots I've been fishing, we caught like two, three big fish off every spot, plus a lot of small ones. But this morning, can't seem to pull anything. I've pulled a lot of fish, but I think the biggest fish in the world is probably a kilo, which is not going to win this. No luck for Harry Watson. No luck either for Jason Ehrlich. He said earlier he had some plans up his sleeve, but it's been almost three hours since his last fish. Yes. Yes. Oh, that fish has got some weight. I'm giving him some. I don't want him to get down into that stuff down there. There's plenty of sticks. Got him a little bit closer. I'll take it a bit easier on him. This is a nicer bass. That's what we're after. That's what we're after. Yes, Jason. Woohoo! You beauty. <laughs> oh, it was a long time coming, but here's a nicer one. That's a kilo fish, this one. Bit over. That's a good upgrade. Team Netspace really putting the pressure on our championship leaders, Team Shimano. Harry Watson is still searching. These big fish are on the banks yesterday. Today the wind's changed, something's happened. Got a bit of a front come through, I'd say. They're gone. Still a few little fellas here, medium size, 40 centimetre stuff, but man, the big fellas just vacated. So far, there'll be still the odd one here. Someone will pull a big fish off a bank. It's going to be me, I hope. There's one. Oh, and that's the one we want. Yep. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, he swallowed that on the drop. I was pausing and talking to you guys. And that fish has just gulped that and peel drag straight off, and that's a good fish. Oh, yeah. That's a good fish. So, man, I'll take him. Anything I'll take. He's not even that big, but... He's still better than what I got. 
listen to that. Man, that helps. Harry Watson answering Jason Ehrlich's challenge, his second upgrade for the day. Back over to John Schofield. Strip strike. Different tactic. We've seen him use this before. He's fly fishing. He's been upgrading. He has a full bag. But the problem he's had so far is that all the fish he's been catching have been a little bit undersized. He's stripping that line, not using the reel. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Great technique. It's not what we're after. We want his mother. Disappointment for John. Team Mercury in danger of losing second spot. Now, Jason Ehrlich had a pretty slow start, but he's found some form here with about an hour to go. He's really yep. on fire. Saw him take it. Oh, it's a nice fish. Jeez, I'm putting some on him. He's a good fish. The way he's fighting there, you'd swear he was huge. He's an upgrader. He's a good upgrader. Jason's won the battle. And this late surge can see Team Netspace regain some of the ground that they lost after Adam Reuter's disappointing round four. Bang him in the net. Yes. Jeez, I've left it to the last minute. Hour to go. It's hotting up in the Hunter Valley. Team Netspace going well. So too, Team Shimano. Here's Harry Watson on a roll. Oh, hairy stuff in the trees. Need that net. Just got to give him nothing. Wow. Man, that's hairy. Great work and great oh, skill yeah. from Harry Watson oh, for another yeah. upgrade. Carl Jockinson's yeah. upgrading as well. Oh, he's got me bricked. Come here. Come here. Oh, he's not a bad bass either. This last hour is really proving critical. Yeah. Team Savage, Team Netspace and Team Shimano all giving themselves a chance for the maximum points. Oh, he's a good fish. Yes. Yeah. That's more like it. There's not long to go. I've got to do some upgrading quickly. What a finish we're in for, for round five. Here's Harry Watson, still going strong. Ned, where's me Ned? Half an hour to go. He's on for another upgrade. He's the master of the late finish. Oh, that's a better one. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah. That's what we wanted. Wow, that makes me feel good, pull that fish. I fished there before, actually. Just dropped that drop shot minnow back in there. Little Berkeley. Three shakes and she just tightened up. That might be enough for Team Shimano. His yeah, two fish ones. might be the heaviest bag. But Jason Ehrlich yeah, isn't yeah. done with yet. It's almost as if he can sense what's happening between his competitors. He needs another fish. Oh, yeah, there's one right there. Next car straight after that last fish. Just banged it. The outside a little bit wider this time. I was just heading back in. It's all just one after another. It's awesome. That's a solid fish. Nice fat fish. Oh, yes. Didn't realise how big he was till I got him in the net. That is a big fish. Will it get Team Net's base over the line? We'll find out after the break in a very exciting weigh-in. Welcome back to the Australian Fishing Championships. You're watching Jason Ehrlich from Team Net Space preparing for the weigh-in after a very successful last hour. Two of our Bass Pros have already weighed in. John Schofield couldn't quite find the big fish to upgrade successfully, and Carl Jockinson, our current leader, on 2.11. But Jason Ehrlich's last fish could prove the difference. Jason Ehrlich from Team Net Space with two very nice bass. How would you sum up your day, mate? I uh, went from very ordinary to excellent. What, you had a late flurry? I did. Um, in about 15 minutes, I think I bagged seven or eight fish and they were all upgrades. They just went upgrade every time. So I spent more time upgrading than catching fish. It was just awesome. Well, let's get them on the scales. And your bag weighs 2.4 kilos. Well done, mate. Jason Ehrlich, our new leader, but he still has to beat Harry Watson, who also finished with a late run. Harry Watson. Team Shimano's Harry Watson with two rather nice bass. Now, are you happy with these, Harry? Oh, I am at the end because I struggled pretty much all morning and I... And I uh, Cotton onto a technique that slicked the man right, put me onto yesterday in amongst the trees and pulled about five nice bass in a row. So Excellent. in the end I was happy, the start I was struggling. Well the mark to beat is 2.4 kilos from Jason Ehrlich, so let's get them on there. Don't think I got that. And you've got 2.28, mate. Right. Not enough for Harry Watson, so congratulations to Jason Ehrlich. And to top it off, he wins the Nitro Rods Big Fish of the Day, the last one he caught weighing in at 1.33 kilos. Fabulous day for Team Netspace in round five, picking up the maximum 12 points. Team Shimano with eight, Team Savage with six, Team Mercury just with three. But after two seconds in a row, the 
day belongs to Jason Ehrlich. Here he is with Steve Starling. Well, Jason, how do you feel about your day? Um, 120 grams in front at the end of the day. I think every last fish like had to go on the scales, and it was very important to get you know as many grams as I could. Just grams are important in these comps when they're close. And it was just a great day, just to have such a, a great spinnerbait bite at the end. And um, oh, I just had a ball. It was one of the best bites I've ever had. And just a great win for Team Netspace. As we check the championship leaderboard after round five, Team Shimano still lead with 42. Team Netspace have jumped back into second with 39. Team Savage and Team Mercury both with work to do on 32. You'll notice our AFC Pro Anglers using a wide range of specialised rods for their tournament fishing. Nitro rods are designed to cater for every angler and situation. They are light enough to cast all day long, but strong enough to handle any brim or bass that comes your way. And they are available in overhead or spin rod configurations. Our pros can also customise their rods with rod wrap. Available in various colours, rod wrap improves your grip and identifies your many rods. Both nitro rods and rod wrap are available at all good tackle stores. A well-earned and very welcome victory in today's round for Team Netspace, and one that has them breathing down the necks of overall championship leaders, Team Shimano. If you missed any of the nail-biting action in last year's AFC series, make sure you grab yourself a copy of the DVD from any leading retailer. And while you're at it, check out afcoutdoors.com.au and you might find yourself fishing an AFC series one day yourself. Next round, we're off to Lake St Clair near Singleton, and what may yet proved to be our most challenging bass arena. You won't want to miss that one. But before we leave you this time, a few words of wisdom on beating those big Glenbourne bass from today's victor, Jason Ehrlich. Started the day off throwing a jackal lipless crankbait. Um, I was using a Strudwick hard baits rod for that work. Teamed up with a Shimano Bantam Curado. And on that reel, I've got 10 pound spider wire stealth with some 15 pound vanished leader. With an hour to go, I changed over outfits and I went and worked some trees on the edges. And I chose a spinnerbait to do that work. This one here is an Ospin 5 8 ounce bony brim pattern. Fished that again on a Strudwick rod. This one's a hard bait elite. And teamed it up with a Cronarch SF 20 pound line, 20 pound leader. And that's what I muscled those fish out of that heavy cover with.